So to the phase one that I was talking about earlier, um, we can model the architectural and structural for you. When we do that, we're really able to get a very good jump start on the whole entire process because we can overlap the creation of structural files with architectural files with the coordinated MEP files. Uh, or we can do the QAR service, so the quality assessment and the refinement service. I'm not going to speak too much about the creation of architectural and structural models. I think most everyone is familiar with what VECO can do there. But I will show you a little bit about the QAR service. So if I go to this document here, when I say QAR, um, what you see here on the left is a standard list of elements that VECO uses for all of our modeling scopes and project activities. And we just go through and we work with the client to see what's included and what is not included. So we go through line by line, we assess the project needs, and we see what 3D elements may need to be in there for a proper model, whether it's for coordination or whether it's for 4D, 5D. And then we have all of these different categories up top. So they're summarized by usability, consistency, quality, 4D, and 5D. Here you can see that we have a scoring system for each of them. So these couple here are 0 to 1, kind of a good bad rating. And then here we have a 0 to 3 scoring scale with um, 0 being poor and 3 being the best. We go through and we manually evaluate these things in the model. So we actually open them up and we have a person that works line by line to see what's included and then rank the model based on this information here. And you can see that the output of that is a score. So using this percentage over here, we can start to get a feel for the quality of the design model to make sure that it's good for a coordination background. And we can also identify some of the things that may need to be fixed up before we proceed on with coordination. Um, we also make a report. So this is a sample report that comes from that. We've included screenshots and descriptions of the different issues. So in this example right here, um, the ones that I've highlighted in green are things that we feel need to be fixed before we can proceed with coordination using a design team model. So in this example, the bulkheads were missing from the model. And the amount of framing, the stud framing, and everything that needs to go into these bulkheads, and the fact that MEP elements often pass through them, we would advise the client in this situation that this should be updated and corrected within the model before we proceed with it as a coordination background. Um, we check everything when we do these model analysis. We check everything against the 2D drawings. And this is a good example of that output right here. The reason we do that, even though we receive the BIM models, uh, we understand very much that, the again, the installer doesn't get these BIM models. The installers are always working off of the printed documents a lot of times they come to them in PDF format and then are printed out on paper and sent to the trailer. So rather than just going by the information that's in the model to perform the coordination, we check to make sure that the model complies with the 2D documents. And this is a small example where you can see that all the ceilings are supposed to be at a common elevation per the reflected ceiling plan. However, inside the model, because of this pretty simple overlap, we can tell that one of these ceilings is off by at least an inch or two. Um, so this is the stuff that we would go in there and we would do a very detailed look at to make sure that everything we need is in there. This is another example where we have a stairwell where all of the interior walls, the shaft walls, are missing. And for the purpose of standpipe modeling, we want to make sure that this stairwell is represented properly inside of the BIM model before we proceed with coordination. Um, we go through, again, we check all the ceilings to make sure that they're there, that they're matching the elevation they're supposed to be according to the 2D drawings, and then also the thickness. So um, you may just have a sliver for a piece of drywall in some ceiling models,
but in reality, if that's a gyp ceiling, you need a three and five eighths inch stud, or maybe if it's an ACT ceiling, you're going to need an inch and five eighths for grid. So that's the kind of uh, spatial stuff that we look at. We can also do, uh, as I mentioned, the 4D, 5D analysis. So this is a small example of a wall that extends up through uh, the full height of the model. But if you were going to do quantity analysis on this, this, this wall would need to be updated to match the details. So after doing this model evaluation service, we're able to give the clients um, a couple of options on what they can do with their design team models. And that's what I have uh, right here. This is a typical change order, as we call it. Um, we tell you from the very beginning when we contract the process that after we do the model evaluation, we'll provide a change order that shows you everything we found, along with the diagrams that I just showed you, and make some suggestions about what may need to be done. So in this example here, we've gone through and we've identified just the essential modifications. So again, everything having to do with space, that 3D space, making sure that um, everything's represented the way it needs to be before we start routing all the MEP elements in there. As we make those changes, we can document them for you so that that documentation can then be given back to the design team and they can update their models if they choose to. After that, we have a service where we can do the validation of those updates. So again, um, if this information is going to be published to your facilities maintenance software, if some changes need to be made for coordination to accurately reflect the construction model, those changes should be updated in the original design model before we all publish together to the FM database. And so we're able from the very beginning to price that evaluation. And that's a really quick process, but once the model updates are done, we just use our own report, go through and make sure that the changes match the assumptions that we've made. The last option that you see in here is for 4D and 5D compliance. This has a lot to do with standard naming conventions and modeling techniques to make sure that you get the right quantities that you need out of these models. Um, not everything in 4D, 5D compliance relates to coordination. So we will work with you from the beginning to determine if you're going to leverage this coordinated model for estimating and scheduling. And if you are, we'll be able to help lead you to how to update it for that. After that, we're able to price a few of the different options together. So you can see that our recommended approach is to make the corrections for the spatial coordination, document the corrections that we've made, and then perform the future validation to help work with the design team and really to educate them on how to start making models that are a little bit more, to, a little bit more conducive to construction. And then, of course, we have the option to make it fully 4D, 5D compliant. So this is our QAR service. This is the outputs that come from it. Um, let's jump back into the presentation. Uh, here's a list of some of those things that I showed you in the QAR service that we'll take a look at. So just kind of spelled out again more clearly the level of detail, the file format. File size is a pretty big one. I'm sure a lot of people who've worked in coordination know that sometimes these models can get prohibitively large when you start modeling all the MEP systems in there. So we've got enough experience to go in there and know what can be purged out uh, without losing any of the fidelity of the model. We look at the modeling techniques, the content, the completeness. And again, this is really important, the evaluation against the 2D drawing. 